Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Redmond and I'm back to read you a new story. Now today I have with me my friend, Pig and Wolf. So let's get started. Now I'm wondering how many of you have heard the story of the three little pigs? Well, I can hear you already. You're all saying, well, Mrs. Redmond, I know the story of the three little pigs, but have you heard the story of the three little pigs told by the side of the big bad wolf? Well, that's the story I'm gonna to read to you today. It's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by A. Wolf. Now, A. Wolf is going to tell his side of the story to our author, John Sheshka. And this book is illustrated by Lane Smith. So let's get started. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. Now, everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. Here he is. You can call me Al. I don't know how this big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Now, maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault that wolves like to eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. You know, if cheeseburgers were cute, they would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, this whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Well, one day, back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold that day and I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, straw? Who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. And I didn't want to just walk into somebody's house, so I called, Little Pig! Little Pig! Are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without my cup of sugar for my dear old sweet granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch and I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed a great sneeze. Achoo! Well, that's a big sneeze. What happened? And you know what? The whole straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. And it seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner just lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. Now this neighbor was the first little pig's brother and he was a little bit smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. I ran the bell of the stick house. Ding dong, nobody answered. So I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And he yelled back. Go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. 
Well, I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. So I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth. And I sneeze a great sneeze. Achoo! And you're not going to believe it. But this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. And when the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did what, the, what was the only thing I could do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little bit better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny, sweet granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. Now this guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have had the brains in the family for he had built his house out of brick. So I knocked on the brick house. No answer. And I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you want to know what that rude little porker said? Get out of here, wolf, and don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home, maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Achoo! And the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Well, now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. And when the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for earlier for dinner and they figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of this huff and puff and blow your house down and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. Now, boys and girls, whose story do you believe? Do you believe the story the pigs told? Or do you believe the story that the wolf told? I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.